Welcome to my review on the MG Trophy HS DCT. I'm going to tell you all the things that I wished I'd known about this car while I was looking to buy one. And also, it's just going to be a little review regarding the interior and what it's like to drive and some of the things, some of the equipment that, that are on the car. So firstly, if you want to see how big the boot is, then there are plenty of videos on YouTube about that. There are plenty of videos about how the front of the car looks and its uh, lighting. And also, same again, the styling of the rear. So, so look at those. But if you want one, then this review will be about what it's like to drive and sit in the driving seat. All right. So the first thing that I want to say is it comes with a nice leather armrest. With a cubby hole underneath it and inside that cubby hole you can just make out a little vent for the air con so if you want to keep anything cool in there you can do that will also move forward like so so you can rest your arm on that nice and comfortably when you're driving let's get that out of the way you've also got this cubby hole in the center console that you could move back and you've got two cup holders. I've got a little wire in mine there at the moment, so I'll come to that. And also a space where you can store a mobile phone in the sort of oblong position, all right? So that's that. They seem to be reasonable, reasonable size for everything you'd want to do with them. So there's also another little cubby hole here, which I've got to say is useless to put things in because when you close it, it's it's really only an inch of space underneath there. Only very small things, maybe. And then you've got your USB ports, which is one for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and also one charger and the ubiquitous 12-volt fag lighter socket. Okay? So I've got in there at the moment a short wire, which I got from uh, Amazon for, I think it was about six quid for two. The wire to run Android Auto to your mobile, I'm not sure about Apple, but the wire that you choose needs to be a 10 gigabyte per second or 10 GBS, I think it is. Anything like that will work. And I've got a short one now, so I don't have to have wires trailing all over the car. And that's enough then. I think it was about 30, uh, 300 mil, about 12 inches, I think, all told. Looks a bit short, but there you go. And it's just enough to reach this little part of the, the car there where I can store the phone in there. Okay, so uh, we don't have any wires dragging around the car. Now then, there's a gear stick. Like any other normal gear stick on an auto, uh, you can select park or drive or neutral and reverse. And there's not really that much to say about that, apart from the fact it's quite ergonomically designed. And then also, you've got a boot opener there. Um, I think that's for the start stop, which this car is. This car, by the way, is the, uh, I think it's a 1500 uh, turbo petrol only non hybrid. And then we've got hazards there, driving mode, which you can put it into sport, comfort, or whatever else you, you want to do. I'll, I'll leave you to mess around with that if you get one. Um, not too sure about that button. Got to read the handbook. Hill descent, probably, maybe. Auto stop, and the handbrake there, which is on a switch. Okay, so that's that then. Now the steering wheel has got the normal controls, such as the stereo, uh, volume and telephone. And then the other side, some in-car controls, which I'll show you those when I switch it on. And that red sport button, which uh, does make a difference when you press that. It makes the car quicker and more responsive. But most of the time I spend mine in eco mode uh, because I'm a little bit of a, a, a miser. Frugal, shall we say, which is part of the reason why I've got this car and I'll come to that. So then let me show you exactly what you see when you turn it on. So we'll press the start button. There we go. So you get the MG logo and you've got your uh, speedometer, I think, to the left and also the rev counter to the right and then a small display for the car in the middle. And the information for the car, if you scan across... But refuses to accept oh, any for himself for smearing the royal family. He's Turn the radio down. There we go. So if you scan across then, you can see 
various different things about the current journey, uh, the luminance level on the dashboard, I've got mine to the top. Um, that's the cruise control, which is adaptive cruise on this car. So please look that up if you don't know what it is. Seatbelt on fasten because I'm not going anywhere. And also uh, a few other bits if you press down. There's the accumulated total, range to empty, tyre pressure, which is always useful. Uh, and then the battery level, so on and so forth. And uh, there's all. it's quite simple actually, to be fair, which is surprisingly so on, on, on this car. Uh, and then if we move to the display, which is here, I won't show you Android Auto or whatever because I'm on the phone and I'd need to plug that in. But pretty much then Android Auto is there, music's there and dub radio. And if you scan one across, there's a few different bits and pieces that you can use to set the car up the way you want it. Okay, and then up the side here, you've got your telephone, uh, the car settings. Uh, I think that's the radio, whether you want DAB or AM, music, and then home. Now then, I have heard a lot of people say that they don't like the fact that the display is uh, is for controlling the um, the air con and, and, and that, those type of settings as well. It doesn't really bother me. And I've, I did hear a review where somebody said that um, it was a bit arduous to press one button and then another if you want the heated seats on so let me just show you that anyway so those are the, uh, the hard buttons down there so you've got volume up uh, volume up volume down home so if you press that you'll just go back to where you were which is that screen uh, and then the car settings right driver handling driver assist locking lighting etc and then if you press this one just here I'll press that just now it will take you then to uh, the climate control settings on the car. So you get aircon on, aircon off, the entire system on and off, uh, whether you want uh, air to come in from the car or circulate what's already existing, and the heated seats. The heated seats on this car is just on and off, so no settings, and I've found that just fine. You either want warm or off, and that's good, no problem to me. Everything else is as you'd expect. That's the heater control, uh, the, the blower strength, and then also you've got here the temperature, which you can have on sync or not sync. So you can have dual zone, one side low, one side high, etc. so on and so forth. And then over the other side there, you've got your uh, where you want the blower to be, to your face, to your feet and face, or multiples of which are none of the above. All right. So that's that then. Um, so what's it like to drive? Do you know what? It's fine. It is fine. Right, I'm just going to turn the engine off now for a second. So, again, I did hear talk that uh, the car's a little bit jerky, or can be, especially in cold weather. Do you know what? It is slightly. It is. But I've had enough cars to be able to compensate for that, and quite honestly, even if it was doubly jerky as it is now, it still wouldn't be a problem. So don't worry about that. That's fine. Also, weirdly... The passenger seat does not come with the seat height adjuster. Now, this car is the uh, the 2023 facelifted version, the one with the wavy bumper. And I do believe that there's another version coming in 2024, but maybe I could have waited, but I still bought mine anyway, so fine. Um, so bear in mind then, no seat height adjuster on the passenger seat. Looks like it's got one, but it isn't. Uh, it is electronic, but it's only backwards and forwards, and then the um, the rake of the, the backrest. Okay. Um, also, no parking, no, no cameras all the way around the car. So uh, if you turn on the reverse camera, that's all you've got, a reverse camera. And also, no parking sensors to the, uh, the front of the car. The front of the car, again, that doesn't bother me that there's no parking sensors. Um, I had them on my previous car, which was uh, a top-of-the-range Hyundai Tucson, and uh, they just kept firing off at inopportune moments and beeping when there was nothing there. It was, it was just a bind, really. I'm fine with no parking sensor to the front, and if you're like me, it won't bother you either. Parking camera to the back, perfectly clear, perfectly audible, fine, no problem. Right, to sit in the car, I've got to say that this is probably one of the most comfortable cars that I've ever sat in. Um, I had to do a 92 miler journey for uh, for work the other day and it was fine and personally I do suffer from a little bit of uh, shall we say tailbone pain due to an accident many many years ago and with this car nothing 
not a jot. In my other car, which was the Tucson, there was an element of that. Um, but so far, so good for this car. I think it's great. Um, so perfectly comfortable, all the right equipment in all the right places, foldy mirrors, downward lighting, um, good clear display, automatic lights, automatic wipers, um, seems to be a little thirsty, but not out of the way. Uh, I think in my Tucson, which was a hybrid, I was getting maybe, um, I don't know, I think I'll average about 50 to the gallon. This is more like about 30, but I've not taken it on a long run yet. Um, but uh, sometime soon, I'll be going on a trip down to Dartmoor with my other half. So uh, I might check the fuel economy there again. But you know what? It's a 1500 straight through petrol with no batteries or whatever, apart from the one that starts the car. So that's fine. Now then, when I bought this car, I was looking at the... Um, Dacia Duster, top of the range Dacia Duster, or this MG. And I did almost go for the Duster, but having tried that car, I think that the, uh, the Duster, I think it's an inexpensive car that's honest about what it is. And uh, so it may be a little bit agricultural inside, a little bit sparse, but you know what, I could deal with that, that's no problem. Um, but uh, it is honest about that. It looks what it is, and I, I still think I might try one one day. However, this MG HS DCT Trophy is still what I would call a budget car, and I'll come to that a little bit in a sec, but it's trying to be a more expensive car, and the thing is, it does a very, very good job indeed of that you would get into this car and you would think because of the way the controls are because of all the leather all the fact that your your armrest is padded and, and whatever it, it's a much much more expensive looking car than what it is a much much more expensive feeling car than than what it is um so when i was looking at a car i, I don't really like to spend that much money if i can help it because after 25 odd years in the motor trade cars really they bore me a little bit you know i, I could have gone out and bought a mercedes a bmw or, or an audi and uh, i know that they can be a little bit hard on the suspension and whatever i think the smart money um is, is always on a car of uh, of an inexpensive cost which this is all right so i can't remember how much it, it did cost but if you want to check the general price at the moment when you watch this video, if anybody ever does, then you will see the price at the time. And I'm sure it'll be in keeping with everything else. OK, now then, here's a little gift for you. If you do want one of these and you don't know about what I'm going to say next, then thank me later and good luck. But... If you go on to the internet and check MG Affinity and read all about it, you can join the MG Owners Club and you can go and purchase one of these cars with, I think it was about a £4,000 reduction. And I do believe as well, free metallic paint. All right. So happy days on that and good luck. And I hope you've enjoyed this little video. If you would like to know any more about my particular car and experiences with it, then please just leave a comment and I'll get back to you when I can. But that, my friends, is that. And thank you for watching. Cheers. Bye.